Let's talk Utah Jazz basketball on the Monty Show. So the baseline question, I guess, is should the Utah Jazz make trades with the L.A. Lakers? Now, you know they sent Pat Bev there over the summer. Okay, it's Pat Beverly. He was never a Utah Jazz man. But let's say that the Utah Jazz want Jordan Clarkson and they're willing to give you a first round pick. Jake, is that a deal the Utah Jazz should make? Yeah, I mean, I I think that if the Lakers want Jordan Clarkson and they're willing to give you a pick, I think you got to humor that deal. I, I, you know, I I think what's really interesting is is the Lakers have been really stubborn about about providing that pick or picks because they have two of them. You know, the Lakers have been very uh you know yeah stubborn is the word that i would use now the word you know that they would use their the outlook that they have would would be much more of like hey it's got to be the right opportunity or or you know you only get one shot at it so you know don't mess it up type deal you know and so to me i i, I look at this situation and i say yeah i mean if the lakers are willing to provide a pick sure like that's a conversation that you want to have but but again i still maintain that you know with the hard cap situation for the jazz and in in uh, several teams around the league like the money is the biggest challenge so in theory yes if they're willing to hand hand over a pick absolutely but i think that in reality like you you're going to have to put together this three team situation but what's very clear as a baseline is that the lakers are on the phone and they're talking to people and they're and they're going to continue to you know figure out what deals they can put together yeah i think they absolutely should be dealing with the lakers i think it makes perfect sense and you know the hard part for me is that i think when you look at the way that the lakers do business they clearly have their own agenda. And I want to play a couple of bites from Laker general manager Rob Palenka, who yesterday had a press conference to introduce Rui Hachimara, who they just acquired in trade from Washington. And I think it's fascinating to hear Rob Palenka talk about being champions with the LA Lakers. Because we've talked about this on the show. Are the Utah Jazz all in on being a championship organization. Notice I didn't say winning a championship. Are they all in on being a championship organization? Everything you do, every decision you make, every video you put out, every contract you sign, every vendor who sells a beer, are you all in on being a championship organization? Because it sure the heck sounds like the Lakers are. Yeah, I think the calculus for the Lakers is um, to win a championship or not. There's no in between, in between or incremental growth. So as we analyze opportunities, we have to do it through that lens. And I said this at the beginning of the season. If, if there's an opportunity to get all the way to the end and win a championship, there's no resource we'll hold on to if we feel like that's there. But at the same time, the, the completely unwise thing to do would be to shoot a bullet early and then not have it later when you have a better championship move you could make. So that's that's a, a really um, delicate calculus and it's something that the entire front office, you know, we evaluate with all the moves. And um, if we see a move that puts us as the front runner to, to, to get another championship, the 18th one here, we'll make it. And if that move doesn't present itself, we'll be smart and make it at a later time. I mean, that's fascinating to me. Because he says the only thing that matters is winning a championship for the Lakers. And I, I don't know that that's the attitude that the Jazz have. And, and the interesting thing is, is that they they may not be winning very many games over the last couple of years. And they've made disastrous decisions. Absolutely, that's correct. But every decision they've made has been made because they thought it would get them closer to a championship. And I'd much rather have that than terrible draft picks and terrible free agents and just the the passive moves that dig the hole deeper and deeper and push you further and further away from a championship. I actually have a lot of respect for that mentality. Is that the reality at the Lakers? I think it is. Just having been at Staples Center, now Crypto.com Arena, uh, over the holiday season, like at Christmas time, when we were there to watch the Laker game, like it's just a different building. It feels like a championship building. It feels like everything they do there has drip and swag to it. Whereas I think here in, in Salt Lake City, we're moving towards that at the Delta Center now. We have this complete renovation that happened, the new entertainment venues, the the restaurants, the Toyota Club, the that that party 
deck, if you will, that's up on the third level now. Mm-hmm. All the new scoreboards and ribbon boards, like it feels like a big to do. It feels like a big event to go to a jazz game now. I think we're moving in that direction. But when it comes to trades, this idea that you traded Boyan Bogdanovich, Jake, to the Detroit Pistons just to put your thumb in the Lakers' eye. Bojan. That right here, I think, is exactly what Rob Palinka's not going to do. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that, that Rob Palinka is going to, 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 to make some short-sighted deal. I, I think, you know, the Lakers are, are that organization where, they, where every move they make, they're only going to make the move if they think that it's going to work for them. And, and, and I get it. Look, some people say, hey, you know, Palinka is, is not done well. And, and, you know, yeah, it hasn't worked out as far as Westbrook and AD. And, and I know, hey, you know, Anthony Davis and LeBron in the bubble, they won that championship. And, and I'm not even taking that away from them. But I think it's time to just, you know, be acknowledging, hey, it's been a bit too long since you were relevant again. Right. You know, like it's been a couple of seasons now. And and obviously it gets brought up on the show. We talked about it yesterday that AD is constantly hurt. You know, so when, when I look at the moves and I look at the trades and acquisitions, like in theory, Westbrook, LeBron, and Anthony Davis, you would think that those guys would be able to figure out how to play together and win a championship. Like that doesn't seem like it would be that difficult. But in reality, it did turn out to be difficult. It did turn out to be, you know, a a, a really big challenge. And I and I look at the Jazz and I say, man, like which which situation would I rather be in? Would I rather be the Lakers? With Braun and Westbrook and a in a constantly hurt Anthony Davis who just can't seem to put it together? Or would I rather be Danny Ainge in the Utah Jazz? Not in Los Angeles, a little bit smaller of a market, no big names on the roster really. But yep. we know that this team has big time potential, and all it takes is a couple of right moves to unlock that. Yeah, and I want to play this other bite from Rob Polinka as well because I think it's very telling. And again, if you're you're just tuning into the show, we're talking about what what this philosophy that Rob Polinka talked about yesterday, and why we think that the Utah Jazz should really listen closely. To what he's saying there, because I I think one of the interesting bites here is listen to what Rob Palenka says about what he wants back in return. You know, it's easy to to, uh, you know, get a veteran at the end of their career with the pick. But when you can get a player that, you know, hopefully has a 10 plus year runway of great basketball in front of him like Rui does, um, that's a really unique opportunity at the trade deadline to get. And we wouldn't trade for a young player without doing a deep dive and study. And, um, you know, having plans to hopefully keep them here for the long term. Yeah. Well, I think that's a really interesting, but I want a young player with a runway in front of him. Mm -hmm. Now, does Rui Hachimura have that? I have no idea. We're going to find out. But what I do know is LeBron James does not have that. And you're seeing LeBron James ball his ass off 46 more last night. Do you understand what LeBron has done over the last couple of weeks? He's now projected to to get to Kareem on February 4th. Yeah. In 10 days, he's projected to get there. Like, all of this craziness. And I I just hope that Danny Ainge, and I'm sure he is. I, I have to believe he is. Right. I hope that Danny Ainge is paying attention because you're looking at a situation where you know, the, the the Lakers are not nearly the best team, but how far behind the Jazz are the Lakers right now? Not far. And and, and I mean talent. I don't care about the standings. Talent-wise, I would say the Lakers are more talented, but they're never healthy. So the Jazz are more talented in practical application. Mm-hmm. But the Lakers are always that one move away because money's not a thing for them. Market size is not a thing for them. Perception versus reality is not a thing for them. It, it, it's just a really interesting way of doing business. And again, I will just say, I think it is imperative that everything you do, whether you are a snowplow driver this morning in Utah or you are the CEO of the Utah Jazz, mm-hmm. everything you do needs to be to win a championship and be a championship organization because too many times in sports, you operate from this perspective of of it doesn't matter, we're not going to win anyways, or I'm going to save money because we're not going to win anyway. That's not what championship organizations do. They do what's best 
in the long term uh, for their organizations. All right. Good morning, everybody. If you're here watching the show, please make sure uh, you give us a thumbs up. We are very close to the uh, 10,000 subscriber milestone. Uh-huh. Um, it, we, when the show started, we, we have picked Boom. up five already. We okay, are now. So 25. We are now. No, 30. We are now 30 subscribers away at 9970. Okay. We're 30 away. I mean, literally. You know, 30 you subscribers do, away from 10,000. All we got to do is about 10 an hour here, and we'll be there before hit, the show's over. Hit the like button. Hit Please. the like button. Hit the like button, damn it. Because this is that's how we get to 10,000 subs, and you're not going to want to miss what happens at 10,000. I, I, I am telling you that it is going to be, it is going to be amazing. I don't know what we're going to do. I might just faint. <laughs> but if you're here right now, make sure you hit the uh, like button because it helps the channel grow. And we are trying to get to 10,000 as soon as we can. It has been three weeks. We've added 970 subscribers in three weeks. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It, it's, it really almost, it's almost hard to say that yeah. out loud. So this morning as we, uh, as we talk Utah Jazz basketball and NBA hoops, uh, please make sure that you guys hit the like button. Uh, help the channel grow. Mark Hale says, good morning, all you cold shower soakers. Okay, let's talk about it. Two minutes. Two minutes to talk about cold showers. Okay, so today is my not shower day. Uh -huh. As you guys know, and Jake and I have talked about this as well on the program. Right. I am really program. conscious of how much water I use now. Like With all the droughts and with all the water shortages, I, I used to be a six-day-a-week, every morning, take a hot shower guy. That turned into, you know, every other day, four days a week, take a hot shower. That turned into every other day, four days a week, take a hot shower, but don't use like soaps and detergents on my skin. And I have to tell you, I've always had, knock on wood, I've always had pretty good skin. I've never had acne problems. I very rarely get zits or pimples, like almost never. But my skin has gotten better because I'm not using soap on my skin every day like I was. And now that's morphed into five, six days a week, taking a shower and doing a cold shower at the end of that shower for now what is two to two and a half minutes. I did two and a half minutes yesterday morning. But I did not take a cold shower today. And I got to tell you guys, I feel noticeably not dull, but I just don't have the higher gear that I usually have when I take a cold shower. Uh-huh. That's uh -huh. what I'm feeling. Yeah. So I absolutely notice it on the mornings I don't take cold showers. And maybe I just need to say to hell with water conservation and take a cold shower every morning. Yeah. Or maybe it's maybe, I mean, maybe it's, you know, like take a five minute shower, like three minutes in the hot, like just three minutes in the hot, do your cold and get out. Like just, just a quick one. Yeah. And usually what I do when I get in the shower is I, I will, I will take two minutes and stand under the hot water and just let it own me. Like oh, that. it's amazing, oh. right? It wakes you up. Mm -hmm. Then I quickly do my hair. I wash my body. And then I'll do, you know, the two and a half minutes in the cold water. Yeah. So generally, I'm in the shower 10 minutes. Yeah. When I'm not in a hurry or if I don't have to work, that could be 20 minutes. Yeah. But it just is a difference. But yeah, today I did not take a cold shower. And trust me when I say I notice it. Uh, Yusuf says, Lakers have signed more players in, uh, than the league so far. They have had a lot of loss, uh, roster inflexibility. They have... They're not very flexible right now at all because of the volume of players they have come and gone. NY Monty fan, how the heck are you, bud? Let's go today. MJ uh, are bringing the heat. Let's go. That's right. We're MJ. Yeah, now. right. Mon Monty right. and J yes, MJ. Yes, yes. Yeah, Monty see what and there. Jake. See, see what he did, did there? there? See what he did there? See how that works? Showtime Tom says, what's up, Tom? Mr. Preston, a member of the program as well. Good morning, casuals. Happy hump day. Yusuf says, Hatchy must release his career. It's close to being done now. What are you talking about, bro? You think Hachimura... But no, he he's basically saying he's almost played his way out of the league. I don't know that I would say that. This Laker opportunity is a big one. They're going to get Anthony Davis back tonight. You're getting LeBron at a very high level. I think it's going to be interesting to see at what point, at what point does Rui Hachimura become the full-time starting power forward uh, for the Utah Jazz. I'm interested to see For the that. Lakers. For the Lakers, excuse me. I said Jazz. For the Lakers. I'm interested to see that because he does not play last night. Does he play tonight? Like, what does he... 
You know, they started they started LeBron, uh, Troy Brown Jr. They just start Rui Hachimura now. Because uh, <laughs> Troy Brown played 28 minutes, was a minus 13, and gave them seven points. Because it's garbage. Do you guys understand that LeBron gave them 46 last night? They got 15 from Thomas Bryant and 17 from Russ off the bench. That's it. They lose 133 to 115. That's ridiculous. Anthony Davis back tonight. Uh, I don't know when you you start playing Hachimura, but it can't be long Mm -hmm. because I think that they are fighting for their playoff lives. LeBron had 46 last night. Yeah. I mean, dude is like I, I... I know you're tired of hearing me espouse about how well LeBron's playing right now. I'm telling you, he is the best offensive player in the league right now. Hands down. Like he is the best offensive player in the league. And I don't I don't know how he's doing it. At 38 years old, I have no idea how he's doing it. I, I really don't. And I look at I look at Braun and I look at the way that he is he is going about his preparation and I look at the way he's going about his business. And I am I am absolutely admiring the work that he's doing. And I am not a LeBron fan in any way, shape, or form. I think you guys know that. But how can you not have respect for what the guy's doing? They're wasting him in Los Angeles. 100%. Absolutely wasting him. This Anthony Davis thing has got to come to an end. I I mean, I I think it ends this summer. You have got to put serious talent around him, and you have got to try and win a championship. uh, A year from now, you'd better be in first place in the West. I mean, you would better have had a transformative summer if you're the L.A. Lakers because what he's doing now, the fact that they are a game and a half out of a playoff spot. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, the Jazz or the Blazers are going to lose tonight. And my guess is, my guess is with AD coming back, the Lakers will steamroll San Antonio. That's just a guess. And San Antonio has been pretty interesting in that they – Tend to win games they have no business winning, but they're five and sixteen on the road. This should be a double digit win for the Lakers. Yes, and if it's not, I, I think it's just more indicative of their issues. I just think but, Bron deserves a championship caliber team around him. Like this isn't even a conversation. I mean, whether you hate LeBron or like LeBron or wherever you're at with LeBron, like you don't have guy, to like or hate him, but you will <laughs> respect him. Yeah, and I mean you know, he's I, earned that. Yeah, and I, and I think that the guy the guy deserves one more run at least. I I, I and I think that. You know, it's not like he's playing for the Spurs. He's playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. Like, Rob Polinka needs to get the job done. And and I, I appreciate, you know, Rob sitting up there talking about the standard and it's a championship standard and or calculus or whatever the hell he said. Like, you know, like, that's great. That's fine. But at the end of the day, you got to, you, I agree, like transformative or like whatever word you want to use. At the end of the day, however you want to go about it, this has to be a championship caliber roster. And I'm tired of, oh, well, we're just going to go out and get the biggest names available. That doesn't work in the league anymore. Anybody no. notice that? Doesn't work in the league anymore. And by the way, if they could get, they'd be a playoff team with Austin Reeves and Lonnie Walker and Anthony Davis with Rui Hachimura starting at the four. They'd be a, they'd be a playoff team. But they can't keep those guys healthy. It's it's funny to say it out loud, but their starting five really is not that bad if everybody's healthy. And if you look at what the Lakers could be running out as a, as a starting five, dude, I'm telling you, it's not as bad as you think it is. And I think most people don't know who Lonnie Walker is, but if you're starting, the issue to me is you would be starting Anthony Davis at the five, Rui Hachimura at the four. I think LeBron at the three. I think you're probably starting Lonnie Walker at the two and Pat Bev at the one Mm -hmm. at point. That starting five is not bad, you know, because then you get Austin Reeves off the bench. You get Russ off the bench. Like you have, you have eight guys that can compete across the league, but the issue is you can't keep everybody healthy. So Thomas Bryan is your starting center. And I actually think he's been more, He's been a contributor. Yeah, he's been impactful. No question about it. I mean, I I think that, you know, again, you're not going to count on him to be consistently competitive or or consistently contributing at the level he was. But I think this is my deal with LeBron. Like, look at how LeBron has been successful in his career. Like, like, let's stop. Let's stop trying to say that LeBron needs, you know, incredible talent to win. What LeBron needs is a system that dudes do their job in, meaning 
hey, Austin Reeves, come in, give me 15 off the bench. Great, you're good. I don't need you to do anything else. Right, right? exactly. Like, just come in, do your job. Like, I look at Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis tries to do too much. That's why he gets hurt. Hey, dude, I don't know if you've taken notice over the, the last 20 years in the league. Dudes who get hurt a lot, they, they survive in the league by not trying to dunk on dudes constantly well, and, or like and it's it's the whole it's not even dunk on dudes it's the whole euro step thing it's the whole hey i'm a point guard in a you know a 7 footer's body you're not you're not don't be a ball handler be a guy that plays on the block and shoots a three occasionally like just know your matchup though too like that's the genius Man. of anthony davis like playing him at the 5 most nights outside of when you're playing like an Embiid or a Jokic or the best guys in the league Anthony Davis should be able to give you 25 easily. Yeah. Like 25 and 10 should be a cakewalk for him most nights. Like, Yeah, I totally agree. So that's my issue is it's not that Rob Polinka sucks. It's that Rob Polinka's built a roster that could win, but these guys don't stay healthy. And and yeah, if Anthony Davis would stay healthy, they could be they could go places, but he's never healthy. James Knight still, still got that bromance with the Lakers, I see, Monty. It's not a bromance with the Lakers. Well, what's the difference, though? You can say we have a bromance with the Lakers or you hate the Lakers, right? It doesn't really matter where you're at on the Lakers. The reality is they're the most re relevant team but in the you, league. you dude. have to, I think you have to understand where the who the Lakers are and where they are right now. It is, why does everybody talk Laker basketball every day? Because it's shocking that they are at the bottom of the Western Conference. And by the way, it when they're shocking. winning, it's fun. I don't even care if you hate the Lakers. When the Lakers win, it's fun, right? See, like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, the league's better when the Lakers are better. It, yeah. I mean, it's hard to. Yeah. And I know that small market teams hate when I say this, but Boston, New York, Chicago, L.A. The league's better when they win. Listen, with all due respect to Dallas, San Antonio, Portland, Salt Lake. Uh, Orlando, with Milwaukee. all due respect, Milwaukee, like, like nobody gives it, like nobody was excited, nobody gives a damn outside of Milwaukee. Orlando, when Milwaukee won, or like when Orlando, like, like the most exciting thing about Orlando is Bull Bull and and uh, uh, now Bancaro, Bancaro, those two guys together are the most exciting thing there. Not even that they win ball games. So that's what I'm saying. Like the yeah. Lakers are on another level. Uh, Tony S 22 says, watching you guys from Miami, you have one of the best NBA content anywhere. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate, Appreciate that. you, bro. Uh, Please, you should consider yeah. joining. Yeah. Subscribe. By the dude, way, subscribe. By the way, subscribe, Tony, uh, 99 71. We already picked Let's up go. another subscriber 29 to go. Okay, as so we, we have, we have, uh, what would that be? Uh, 34 minutes left in the hour, right? So to stay on pace, we got to get to 80. We got to get to 99, 80. Right, dude, we're not going to get ten thousand during the show. Oh yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. You, I try. I believe in you guys. I believe in you, even when you don't believe in you. I believe that you can take your little thumb on your little phone and you can click subscribe. I believe in your ability, and I know you watch the tape. You've got a game plan on how to do that. You cold tub this morning. Your thumb works really fine. Okay. That's very interesting, Jake. Uh, by the way, I also put the uh, join link in the comments section. Make sure you, you consider joining. It's $9.99 a month. And, I mean, it is at 8 o'clock. You're going to find out why you want to be a member of the program. Because man. Uh, we have a huge event coming up. We have a spring training only event coming up. Um, and, again, if you're a member before 8 o'clock, everybody that's a member before 8 o'clock is guaranteed entry uh, into our birthday bash on March 10th and wait mm -hmm. until we drop the name on you guys. Don't wait until you hear the name. Don't wait until you hear the name because we're keeping receipts. Yep. The 66 people that are in the membership group now are guaranteed to be in the building on March 10th. And I'm telling you, those refunds. I'm telling you right now, you do not want to miss the birthday bash bash on March tenth. Just saying, man. We get we, in the membership. The guest list is going to be unbelievable. The prizes are going to be unbelievable. It is. I mean, if you golf, if you're a fan of cars, if you are a fan of food, like it's going to be unbelievable what you are going to get at our birthday bash. Make sure you become a member before eight o'clock. Click the link in the comments there. Uh, Tom says, I'd rather be eighth seed with a ton of first round picks 
than the 13th seed with meh picks. But see, the Lakers, this is the really, Tom, I think this is a really interesting discussion. The Lakers don't play rookies generally. For better and for worse, they don't play rookies. They traded, if you look at what they traded to get Anthony Davis, that group of guys, right? And you understand that Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, uh, my guy in New Orleans. Who's Brandon in, Ingram. Brandon Ingram, thank you. They trade B.I., Lonzo Ball, Josh mm -hmm. Hart for Anthony Davis, and they win a championship. That's who the Lakers are. So right there, that was a good deal. That That's worked. who the Lakers are. won. And now, post-haste, like, hey, man, you have traded Alex Caruso, you or let him go, rather. You have you know let KCP go. You have let Kyle Kuzma go. You have... Yeah, Let dude. all these guys go, and Anthony Davis now is into the suck, right? And so now you're going to have to find a way to dig out of this. But they're not interested in, in, in which is so remarkable about, uh, uh, remarkable about their future first-round picks. And Jeannie Buss, the owner of the Lakers, is unwilling to move those first-round picks. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. Teddy Wayman, what's up, my guy? Troy Cushing. Good morning to you. Uh, almost, Teddy says almost 10,000. Let's Dude, go. I Let's know, go. Bro. I know. 9971. Let's go. Who's hit the, the next like one? button? Who's it, the next sub? Well, and when you hit the like button, the reason that's so important, the reason we pound the like button every day on this show is because that brings a ton of new subscribers to the channel. And so when we have almost 500 views already this morning, 30 minutes into the program, we have 131 of you watching right now and only 38 likes. Hit the like button, casuals. It's Let's free. go. It costs you nothing. Court McMullen says, Jazz should trade Doak for AD straight up. Yeah, the Lakers will do that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they'll end up playing the same minutes by the end of the year. Anthony Street closed Davis. Anthony Street closed Davis. I mean, you ain't wrong. You ain't wrong. Yeah. It, it, at any point. At I'm, any point, does Anthony Davis ever play 82 straight games? No, no. And I'm here for the Anthony Street Close Davis trash talk. I'm about it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know He's how you're not now. He's earned it. Lewis says, when you hit 10K, it'd be amazing as uh, pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. You want to explain that? I don't know what pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows are like. Bro, what are you Lewis, talking I mean, about, man? Do you need to like let some some things out? Do you want to air out the closet? Uh, Lewis, Lewis, my guy, uh, what pre-workout are you taking? I mean, um, uh, you know. Um, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, Yusuf says uh, the only negative and it's temp is that the boys shrink. Well, dude, the boat, when you, you get in that it, cold dude. water, you feel it. You feel it. That's real. That's but, not, that's not a joke. But again, I'm telling you, I didn't cold shower this morning, and I don't feel as great as I usually do. Yeah. I don't have that top gear. Uh, can I Johnson says, top of the morning, fellas, just getting in. Can I hit the like button? How are you? Roger Sales, I heard uh, of the benefits of cold blast at the end of a warm shower years ago, and I've been doing it for years. It has many health benefits. I don't do full minutes and time it. Too hard to corp. I think that might mean cope. Too hard to cope? Cope. Uh, I can tell you that right now I'm at the point where I have to time it because I don't have a real good feel on time. Because when you stand in, we're talking about cold plunges and cold showering, by the way, yeah. as part of our NBA talk this morning. Um, when you stand in that cold shower, you just want to get out. Yeah. All you want to do is get out. That's it. All you, all you want to do is get out. And it is, dude, it's, it's not rough. It's easy, dude. It is rough. Uh, Ron Nolan says 10,000 subscriber commemoration, ice bucket dump on air, no cold shower day. Today we uh, today would be perfect. Do it, Monty. You don't dare do it. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Ron, you're bro. right. Ron, why don't Ron, you do it for us? Ron, if you get in, get in, get in the membership, and then you can then you can have demands like that. You know? Yeah. Hey, man. You know. Get in the membership. You know. Um, I I I am fully on board with that. Uh, Mister E says I believe Bobby Portis would give the Jazz toughness, rebounding, and good shooting. Always available. Bucks is a team to trade Conley or Clarkson to. Yeah, I mean, Bobby I think, Portis is, you know. You know, NBA sources told me yesterday that the Bucks are the leader in the clubhouse for Jay Crowder. That they're there. There is a deal essentially in principle. And the Suns are just hoping for a better deal. I want it. And I think the interesting thing about that Laker-Rui Hachimura trade is that... Um, you, you kind of start to understand that deals are just not happening now because there's no urgency to move. Mm -hmm. 
the deadline's, you know, two weeks away. It's, I believe it's two weeks from tomorrow. Like, you're, you're just not, there's no reason to get all fired up right now. Like, the deal has to be perfect. And those deals just are rarely perfect at this stage of, of time. Yeah. Um, I do think in the week leading up to the deadline, you're going to see more deals happen. I was also told that Boston would love nothing more than to, to get John Collins uh, from Atlanta yesterday. That Boston has has tried for a good 10-day period here to figure out a way to swing John Collins. Mm-hmm. That's terrifying if you're a Jazz fan. Because if Boston's going to find a way, you're telling me you couldn't find a way? Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. Uh, the macho man says there's not a deal with the Lakers to be made, especially one that includes Kessler. No, you're not trading Walker Kessler. Troy Cushing. Good morning, Monty and Jake members in Neverland. That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Anton, who's a member says, would the Bucks want to trade Portis though? I doubt it. Nah, I don't think so. And I don't think he's a fit for the jazz. Culturally speaking, he's a tough dude to deal with. He is not a guy you want on your club. In my opinion, not where the jazz are. If you're an elite team, sure, not where the Jazz are. Red Heart Norvis, good morning. He says, it's super hilarious if JC gets traded for Ingles and Grayson Allen. Not happening, though, but still would be a great, uh, the greatest joke by Danny Ainge. Not happening. Not happening. Uh, Erux DD says, we should trade Markinen for a bunch of picks and get Wemby in the draft. Actually, you shouldn't. I, uh, this... So again, this goes back to, as we talk Utah Jazz basketball on the Monty Show, this goes back to... Why do you want Victor Wambanyama on your roster? He is, I think we all agree, he's a project, right? I mean, he's a young kid. Mm -hmm. He's got a ton of bodybuilding to do. And his game, the way he plays it now, doesn't necessarily translate to the NBA. There's going to be an adjustment period. Yeah. Is that something that a team who says they want to win a championship as soon as possible does? Trade your best player, Laurie Markkinen, for Victor Wambanyama. Um, that seems like a championship move. Eh, I don't think it does. Yeah. I don't think it does. And by the way, do you know how much money you're going to have to pay Victor Wambanyama? Do you know how much? I, I mean, come on. Yeah. And I don't care about rookie scale. And he's going to be an expensive project, in my opinion. Any chance Riley and Ainge bury the grudge long enough to pull off a trade? I, I do think that... I think that Miami would love nothing more than to add Malik Beasley or, and or Jordan Clarkson. The problem is, as we reported on the show yesterday, Jazz sources told us that they're not in any way, shape, or form taking Duncan Robinson in return. Yeah. And I think that's exactly the answer that they should have because there's, there's no way, if you're the Utah Jazz, that you are willing to take Duncan Robinson. I don't know what it would take. And by the way... Isn't Tyler Hero just a younger version of Jordan Clarkson? Yeah. I think he is. And so all of these people that are like, oh, Tyler Hero, Tyler. Well, you can't have them both, in my opinion. I don't think Tyler think, Hero and think, Jordan Clarkson work together. I think Jordan Clarkson is more prolific than Tyler Hero. Like, I think Jordan Clarkson regularly outperforms Tyler Hero. So, you know, I'd, I'd rather have Clarkson if that's what we're talking about. Yeah, I, 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 it's an interesting question, Tony. I do think there's a deal to be made there. I do. I, absolutely, I do. Uh, but I don't know that... I don't know that Duncan Robinson can be part of that deal, Yeah, frankly. And if you're not going to trade Nikola Jovic to the Jazz, I don't even know that a deal happens. I'm not doing a deal with Miami without Jovic in it. Yeah. I'm not doing it. And I think that's the deal that Danny's driving. And I think that's going to be an awfully difficult deal. And again, back to Victor Wambanyama, yeah. I'd much rather have Nikola Jovic than VW. Every day of the week, hundred percent. And I, I think, I think he's just a he's a huge. In my opinion, he's a he's a huge bucket of potential that's waiting to be developed. And I don't think we have any idea how good Jovic can be. And and I'd love to find out. I would yeah. absolutely love to find out. All of our Utah Jazz talk it, on this show is presented by our good friends at Quick Quack Car Wash. Plato, I have. No idea. Lipstick. Apparently my car door looks like a canvas. Quick back. It's my saving grace. No one else needs to know the madness of my job. Just me. Lipstick. 
lipstick. The worst thing that get, happens in my car is my dogs. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love Quick Quack because the vacuums are free. And I love that they offer you the different attachments. They have the one like big, big attachment that does your floors and stuff. But they also have that thinner, longer tube right. that gets into your cup holders, gets between your seats, gets under your seats. Like I love that's what I love about Quick Quack. I get free towels, free vacuums, I get the best car wash in the business, and I'm in and out in five, seven minutes. Yeah. That's what I love about Quick Quack Car Wash. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show. Mesh, what's up? Can you uh, guys see the Jazz packaging a bunch of picks to move uh, to draft Scoot Henderson if that became available as an option? Oh, sure. I think Scoot Henderson's the most NBA-ready body in this draft. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it even is, uh, uh, to be honest with you, Mesh, I don't even think it's a thing where it's like if it becomes available. I mean, it's available. I mean, you can you can do that 100%. It's more about do you want to do that? Is do that you want to do that? Yeah, is that the route you want to go? And and I'm not convinced that Danny wants to go that route. I think Danny is much more opportunistic in the trade market than, than we all realize. And I think that, you know, uh, this is really his first trade deadline in control with the Utah Jazz. So that's what I'm saying. I, I, I Yeah, it's been quiet overall, but... I think to, to what you were just saying, like, well, there's still plenty of time until the deadline is here, really, in NBA terms. Yep. Marsing Outdoor, good morning to you. Players will pay, uh, play more if they stopped getting paid during games they sit. Yeah, but you, you can't. What sense does that make? I, I'm all here for limiting bonuses. Like, hey, if you don't play 80% of the games before the All-Star break, you can't be an All-Star. Okay, mm, yeah. I, I'm good with that. Hey, you can't get you can't get your, you know you, you I would in, I would be fine including games played bonuses for every player. I would be good with that. But if a player is playing and he is genuinely injured while representing a team while playing for a team, you you can't not pay him. Gordon Hayward broke his leg the first game he played for Boston. He broke his leg. You shouldn't pay him then. What sense does that make? That that you can't do that. What is this? The NFL. Yeah, I, I exactly. Um, let's see. Red Heart Narvis says, Monty, have you seen the clip on YouTube where AD played NBA 2K as himself and he injured himself? Yes, I have seen that. Uh, Olavi says, Monty and Jake, your sources say that Kessler and Markinen are not going to be traded. But if they were sold anyways, what would be their market value if they were on the open market? Well, so if I they were available for trade or free agency? Here's what I'll say on that, though. Like, I, I don't... I just don't think that that's a worthwhile discussion to I have, think be dude. Tough, yeah. I, I think I like I understand. Like I appreciate the question a lot. Um, uh, what 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 is this person's name? Olave. Uh, Olave. Yep. Olave. Like I appreciate the the question a lot, but the reality is, is they are not going to trade those two. I mean, those two guys are you know basically the two centerpieces that they feel that they want to build around. So to me. I, yeah, I mean, you can play the what if game if you want to, but but I, I I think your time is much better spent looking at like Beasley, Vando, Conley, JC certainly, you know these other guys that have availability. And I think you know the clip we played earlier in the show where Rob Polink is talking about, hey, we we would you know if we're going to give up picks, it's going to have to be for a younger guy that's got you know a ten uh, you know what hopefully is a ten year runway in front of him. Okay, well, maybe that's not Beasley per se, but Vando's probably got that if you develop a little bit of a jumper or a little bit more of an offensive game at a minimum, right? Like, you look at some of these other guys who have that, you know, again, assuming you develop them, and I think that there is opportunities there for the Lakers and the Jazz. But overall, I just think that this trade market is just chilling right now. People are not going to get out in front of the timing. They're not going to get out in front of hey, there's two weeks, you know, or two weeks in a day, I guess it'd be 15 days until the deadline. 15 days in NBA terms is years, bro. Like, that's that's a long time, you know, as far as making trades and conversations and stuff. I mean, I really wouldn't expect, you know, and again, this is opinion. This isn't information. Just my thought and my opinion would be that I really wouldn't expect things to get going until, you know, five days out, four days out to the deadline. Like, that's really when you start seeing things pick up because it's like, okay, deadline's here. I've had a ton of conversations. Yeah. All right, yep. let's start trying to put some stuff together. Yeah, and I, I think there's just this unreal expectation that trades should be happening and they're easy to make and 
NBA trades are incredibly difficult to make. They're not things that, you know, hey, one phone call, hey, why don't you give me uh, Joey and I'll send you Steve and why don't you take my second round pick and we'll call it good. Yeah, that's it's, stupid. Yeah, that's not going to happen because it's really difficult. You have to match up salaries. Um, you have to make sure that the right guy doesn't go to the right player. And the one thing that worries you about the Utah Jazz, I'm telling you, go back to that Boyan Bogdanovich deal because there's a lot of people who believe the Lakers are going to give Detroit a first-round pick to get Boyan Bogdanovich. And if, if they get Bojan and, and Bagsnachevich goes there and they start winning games, you – decided not to trade Boyan Bogdanovich to the Lakers for a first round pick because you just wanted to put a thumb in their eye because you were proving a point. Yeah. And so you traded him to Detroit for Kelly Olenek and Saban Lee, who you immediately bought out and really was never a factor on this club. And you're probably trading Kelly Olenek at the deadline. And All right, we're going to move on here. But, I mean, that's a really scary proposition yeah. that you tried to screw the Lakers and the Lakers wound up screwing you by sending a first round pick to somebody else other than you that should be in your portfolio. Yep. That should really worry you. It doesn't matter who you trade with. It matters what you get in return. I don't care if the Lakers win because you traded them Jordan Clarkson or that Mike Conley goes to the Clippers and they win an NBA championship. I don't care. What did I get in return for that? And what did I do with that asset I got in return for Mike? That's all that should matter to you. Trying to screw the Lakers is exactly why you've never won an NBA championship. Yeah. That mindset is why you've never won an NBA championship, in my opinion. Uh, James Knight uh, says, Bucks have Holiday at the point, and he's a genuine star. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is, he's man. Not, I wouldn't even say he's a genuine star. He is a shot maker. He is a clutch shot maker. He showed that in the playoffs. Eric and Raleigh says VW needs to put on 150 pounds. <laughs> okay, I think maybe he, you know what he should know. do. He should get on the uh, all all Zion diet. You know what I mean? Fat. Well, by the way, did you guys hear that Zion Williamson's out at least two more weeks? Oh, yeah, at least man. two more. By the wow. way, we picked up another sub 9972. Okay, we are just 28 away. From 10,000. Come on. We're trying to cross 10,000 before the show's over. We usually end the show around 9 o'clock Mountain Time. I know we have people listening all over the country. Like, you know, come on. It's not difficult to subscribe. Come nope. On. Hit the like button. Uh, if you're here, all 168 of you, that'd be great. Skynet. Skynet is here. Okay, Skynet. hold on. Let me, let can... me get the... Uh, all right, here we go. Okay. Infowars.com. Hey, Skynet, can you please call the Alien Nation and have them subscribe to the Monty Show on YouTube? Yes. That'd be great. If they could hit the like button a couple of times to uh, help as well, that'd be great. He says, I'll, oh, I yeah. will hold jumping on the Wemby Nyanamo wagon until he's proven himself with the big boys. Agreed. Totally agree. Agreed. Wemby equals Chet Holmgren 2.0, but Wemby's better than Chet. I'm telling and you. And what do they have in common? Neither of them have played an NBA game yet. Exactly right. Brendan Butler says VW is a unicorn. Unicorns are not real. Dude's going to be Odin 2.0. Ow. Jesus. Good Lord. Greg Odin, yeah, was never a thing. And my Monty fan, sorry, but I'm not a big enough risk taker to draft VW. If he were the number one, I would trade that pick away. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Garrett Mears, good morning to you, Mr. Member of the Monty Show. I'd rather trade picks for a proven talent then draft VW and hope he fits in the league. Oof. Exactly See, people right. People have come around. You guys this get is, it. Th people have come around on VW. They understand totally. that just because Buddy is 20 feet tall Buddy. and weighs 80 pounds doesn't mean that he's going to, you know, dominate the league. You know, like it, Buddy. It, it, there's a process. Yeah, he's he's Buddy until he shows me that he can stay healthy and he can drop 25 and 10 every single night. Yeah, dude. see, NY Monty fan showing why he's one of our best. He says, I'd rather drive a scooter than a VW. <laughs> Not interested in always injured, unproven stars like Scoot versus V. Volkswagen versus Scooter. Yeah, like, you a, know, it's like a scooter. Like a one wheel versus right. a Volkswagen. Right. Out of the street clothes, he, Davis. He, exactly. He always. Uh, Brendan Butler says, Danny is waiting for his desperation to peak. I don't disagree with that. Uh, Teddy Wayman says the Jazz need to trade for DeRozan. I'm a huge D. Rowe fan, but that ain't going to happen. Uh, I think the Lakers have a legitimate shot at DeMar DeRozan. If they can find a third team, I think they have a shot. Boyd Lake, good morning to you, sir. Is trading outside your conference or division a thing in the NBA? That's many times a thing in the NFL, or at least it seems to be. I don't think it should be. Look at A-Rodg. Look at A-Rodg. They want to trade him to the AFC, right? That's That's been their stated sort of 
mission with it. And I think that when you, it's, there's levels to it. So when you are Braun, they're definitely not going to want to trade you in the Western Conference. Not that the Lakers are trying to trade Braun, but you, no. you get my point. Like, you know, you, you're not going to want to trade um, a star level, top tier, like any top 10 player, you, you don't want to make a trade inside your conference. You don't want to do that. Mark Hales says you have to make a trade and the other team wins the championship. They are going to uh, trade with you again. I agree. And See, I, don't know I think why that's, that's so really well. Down upon. Yeah. Like, why is it why is it such a negative thing? Like, I hear this from jazz fans sometimes, as an example. Well, we don't want to do business with the Lakers because, you know, if we give them Malik, then they're gonna win a championship. That's right. Well, who cares if they win a championship? That doesn't I, I mean that doesn't like you're in two different places here. I don't care. I, honestly, I don't care. Yeah. I, all I care about is that the Jazz win an NBA championship in the next five seasons. Yeah. That's the that's the edict. That's it. That next year, okay, you're going to probably be a very similar team, maybe a tick better than you are this year, uh -huh. right? Two seasons from right now, this team should be fighting for the number one spot in the Western Conference at the All-Star break. Yeah. And they should be in good shape uh, salary cap-wise and in good shape with roster, roster build. That's all that matters. And I'm telling you, it's absolutely possible. And there's a word in this comment right here. Hero JC practically similar have the same role, but Hero ceiling uh, is way below JC's now. I agree. Hero won't be the player that JC is. But nah. listen, listen to this line: Hero may fit the Jazz timeline, but I would prefer the Jazz to work on Sexton timeline. Yeah, 